three, two, one. Boom, Naraj, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. So the first thing that I got to start out with, a little bit of curveball, is what is your favorite superhero? Favorite superhero? Ah, very cool comment. Uh, question. Who is my favorite one? Wow. You know what? I think growing up, it was always, like if it was my childhood one, yeah. it was always it was always Batman. Batman. I, I don't know why. It was just because, maybe because it was so much on the TV. It yeah. was always on TV. Like, so I got brainwashed into liking Batman. <laughs> and, you know, I maybe thought my brother was Robin and we used to like play out Batman scenes. But that doesn't mean that he's my favorite now. My favorite now, um, who would it be? No, I have, there's so many of them out. I don't even watch like superhero stuff anymore. But um, what I do, one of my um, techniques actually is you channel your superhero, right? Oh, nice. So you channel your superhero. So you have a supreme council of people. And the idea of it is that, um, you know, like through just through breathing, you can get into, into state. And you can change your physiological state. And when you change your physical state with a vision, with an intention, it's, you can almost like um, channel the energy of a spirit from a higher source. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you why. Because some of the breathing techniques that we have in Soma, they, they actually take you into these set states where it's very similar to the effects of psilocybin mushrooms. Mm. Okay? And... They've shown, I was watching a, a listen to a podcast with Paul Stamets. Yeah. And he's talking all about how mushrooms are incredible for neurogenesis mm -hmm. of the brain and how literally with powerful intention, you can actually direct neurogenesis in the brain during a mushroom trip. And so I do believe that with enough intention, with enough belief, self-belief, that you can you can change your brain towards yeah the characteristics of something that you really, really desire if you do it at that right point. And there's an ancient ritual known as sex magic, which mm. is very similar. When you're in an orgasmic state, the highest state of orgasm, if you um, put intention with that state, you can mm. also invoke a manifesting effect where you can download and install the energy or the spirit of um, a higher power, a higher force. So... You can actually, in my opinion, you can, I don't have a favorite superhero because you can yeah. be any single superhero. I think that's the superpower. Yes. Yeah. Is, is, is you becoming the superhero. I, that's well, my favorite superhero. You're, you're my favorite superhero. I, I love it. I love it. So, because, okay. <laughs> that, that is, no, seriously, that's um, something that I definitely think about as well. But I'm going to return real quick to Batman because of the fact that you were almost saying that the impression, because it was so prevalent on the TV and you saw Batman just about everywhere that he yeah. was then represented in your mind. So I want to kind of flash to Coca-Cola, these big conglomerates and you know how you started this journey and then had that like accidental, like blow up moment and That's a good segue, yeah. created uh, now the renegade pharmacist and you know, teaching people how to actually become their own superhero. So how did that journey begin? Yeah, man, that's great. So, um, yeah, it's definitely to do with um, brainwashing for sure. Like, so I actually, like, according to, uh, if you study psychology and mm -hmm. you study, like, the, like, even the consciousness um, teachings of, like, ancient traditions of China and India, um, we evolve through imprinting that occurs in the first seven years of our life. Those first seven years of our life, extremely um, conditioning towards the direction you're going to go into, the things you're going to consume, the people you're going to interact with, the products you're going to buy. Okay, because this is the hypnotic state. This is a state where you're in this alpha theater state as a child where your neocortex hasn't fully developed yet and you're completely always subjected to um, the information of your environment. Actually, we still are. We're still always being hypnotized by environment. But at this point, it's really susceptible, okay? Because you're always in the state that the hypnotists love. Uh, that's what they get you into. 
to plant yeah. suggestions, the su suggestibility state. And this is also um, where the advertising companies put, like to put their effort. So if you look on TV, a lot of the commercials and stuff uh, around, you know, children's TV shows and, and they've cleverly designed to get children to consume stuff that they don't really want. And they're addictive. Like I remember my brother used to be glued to the TV screen um, when he was in America. He just was like, ah. <laughs> you, you had like yeah. really cool special effects in your ads, like much bigger budgets than we did in the UK. So, um, you know, so he'd be glued to the TV screen and watching cartoons and all this stuff. And, you know, I'm sure I was at that age. And what that does is it basically conditions you to buy the big branded stuff. The big brands are the ones who um, have money to be able to fund those things. You know, namely things like Coca-Cola. You know, I'm not going to name too many names, but, you know. Yeah. Um, even like nowadays you have drug companies, you know, drug companies have, they take a lot of the airspace, the ad space totally. and everyone's been brainwashed into, um, into taking drugs. Yeah. There's, there is no pill for every ill, by the way. So, you know, there's, there's an ill that follows every pill though. And that's a whole nother story. But, you know, so I actually wanted to highlight this because I saw the, the problems of of endless consumerism and people drinking like Coca-Cola like it's water, right? And as a pharmacist, I, I was working as a community pharmacist. I hated my job at this time. Not getting better. When I actually had to learn about the effects of diet and nutrition, uh, it was indirectly through a Tony Robbins event where I first discovered um, that nutrition actually plays a role then it was like a big aha moment you know like it's like it was how um actually we're aware of like dying so there's people personal development seminars but people unfortunately have been totally hypnotized I read emails drinking coca-cola you know, smoking, 20 a day, drinking. This is a normal Going through people's diets and lifestyles in the short time that I had, I realized it was a lifestyle that was a massive problem. Um, because what I did was a very efficient and, and simple way of delivering information because you don't get much time in the pharmacy. So I used to write out these little shopping lists for people based on their conditions. And um very very uh like like i was pretty successful and most people who took my advice they they go to the supermarket they make the food that i rest recommend they would stop eating processed foods so that was a simple switch yeah no factory diet i called it the no factory diet just don't eat you know stupid yeah. shit yeah <laughs> and and basically those who followed my advice had incredible um like results within weeks Within actually, like people with diabetes within a week, like just by coming off processed foods, were having a dramatic reversal of symptoms and like losing oh, yeah. weight and all of those things. Like, just don't eat factory food. You know, like one of the problems um, this weight loss industry is that people are going from factory foods to factory foods and they're yeah. not losing weight. You know, they go from one oh. type of processed food to another processed food and wondering why they're not losing weight. And that's why, because just don't eat. Food that's made in a factory that's dead that's lifeless yeah so anyway so that got me actually promoted event in a weird way i actually got fired my first job and then i got promoted to the top of um walmart in the uk and carry a really amazing project and the idea was to deliver health healthy shopping list to people mm -hmm. on a big scale one thing led to another I ended up um, basically like a lightning bolt um, being struck because they didn't they didn't want to carry out mm. the idea anymore. They they basically found after about six months into it that it was probably going to be too controversial for a mm. big media company like that to tell people not to eat sugary foods, not to oh, drink Coca Cola. You know the places where they get most of their profits from as well. Unfortunately, this is just you know. This is just the design of 
corporate switch based on perpetual yes. growth and profit. You know, it's not really for the welfare of other people. And I really saw this, um, this irresponsible behavior of corporates throwing away massive amounts of food, you know, um, changing sell by dates just to get more food on the shelves, all kinds of shenanigans happening yeah. you know, at a very high level. I was super depressed. I was like, I was thinking actually, first part of the fear that hit me was if I do stay up here, what is my life going to turn out like? Who, you know, who am I going to become? Yeah. Um, basically, if I stay in this corporate environment. Then secondly, when I was realized that I wasn't going to stay and I had to either get another job where I'd totally sell myself soul to the corporates or um, I would have to go back to a pharmacy job, which was already selling myself yeah. soul to the pharmaceutical companies. I just got so depressed, man, so disillusioned. And suddenly, like a lightning bolt hitting me, I came down with a chronic illness called ulcerative colitis. Mm -hmm. I was housebound for a year, and literally I was ready to give it all up. I lost three stone in weight, which is like 20 kilograms. Yeah. I wasn't very heavy anyway, but you know, um, I was shitting blood like 40 times a day. Oh, yeah. So ulcerative colitis basically affects your colon. Um, I was in a really bad way, basically, ready to like end it all. And, and they say that um, God stands for gift of desperation. And I was super desperate. And at that time came a dear friend of our family now, Somiyam Kananda, who taught me the foundations of um, Ayurveda, Pranayama, yoga, yeah. uh, applied to healing myself. And she basically said, like, and this was the real catalyst, the change in perception was, if you heal yourself now, if you can cure yourself without the meds, because no drugs were help working at all. You know, I was faced with, do I have my colon removed or the guinea pig for a drug that hasn't been um, tested before? And basically, you know, I just surrendered to what she said. She said, you'd be an amazing role model, you know, amazing role model to other people if with your background and everything. So, you, you know, you're willing to give this a go? And I was like, sure, uh, I've got no other choice. And so I put all of my skepticism to one side, all of my left brain conditioned science, scientific mind to one side, and just listened to her advice, did it. Um, a lot of it was just simple breathing techniques, which I now deliver through SOMA. And not just that, but uh, lifestyle changes, dietary changes, based on your energy type, your body type, and and the ability to like really tap back into what makes you tick, your creativity, mm -hmm. which was for me the music. I was a music producer as well. You know that was my real heart. And then boom, like within a few months, cured myself, and I was like, then I created a business around my passion, which was this meditation music and breath work, I combined meditation music with breathing techniques, boom, that led to another, and I ended up like having this four hour work week, you know, yeah. I heard that story, that book, and I, you know, Tim Ferriss, give him big ups, and then I started touring around the world, started living in Thailand, in like beautiful places, and I was like, whoa, this manifesting stuff really <laughs> works, you know, if you put your intention strongly enough. And I ended up like then becoming, um, friends with all these amazing superheroes in the world. Um, and I then created the world's probably most viral infographic, most yeah. famous uh, infographic about Coca-Cola, what happens one hour after drinking a kind of Coke. And it blew up, blew up the internet, blew up my website several times and I had to keep <laughs> upgrading it. And now the site's become quite um, successful with traffic and we're having a lot of success I mean, you know, different areas with the breathwork techniques that was the, we're yeah. doing, the yoga, Soma yoga. Um, and yeah, it's just been an amazing journey so far. Man. A lot of golden nuggets and yeah. a, lot of, a lot of information to share. Yeah. Totally. So, okay. That, that's awesome. And thank you for giving the whole like bird's eye view of everything that's going on because there's yes, so many different pieces back and forth, whether it's like the corporate greed which like you got to see from the top. And it's something that's like hard because when you start a business, you start to understand about like, 
you can either take it in the abundant route or the fear route. And so much of the corporate structure is just the fear driven. Like, what if I can't pay this guy? Or like, what if the shareholders get mad? And pull up? The whole time those what ifs like dictate literally the way the food goes, the way society goes in a sense. But one of the things that I really wanted to dive into was all of that put you at a place where it basically removed all of the, I guess the social pressures and conventional thoughts so that spirit or whatever was, uh, could break through were for you to listen. And Ayurveda came. So what was that, uh, that technique, that way that you used Ayurveda in order to help, uh, I guess, pull you out? Like, cause it literally, what it sounds like is a 360 transformation from like bedridden to like vibrant, starting to live the life that you knew that you should have been living. Yeah, man. Um, it was, having very good consolation from my Swami. So there's a saying that says, cure rarely, mm -hmm. all right, and console always. And you should never harm, you should never do anything invasive to someone. Yeah. So the idea is you should always console, as a doctor, as a patient, um, uh, the relationship, the best relationship is is just to really console and listen and let people like, talk about their problems. It's usually a psychological reason why people are sick. Okay, in my case, it was I hated my my life, my yeah. job, everything. It was a lot of problems, and you know, just having that um, ability to uh, have someone listen and and then share with you like an encouragement that there is another way, giving somebody hope is like the most important thing is like that's one of the things that unfortunately doctors don't do so well they've changed now they've had to change a lot because they realize that they're the most powerful hypnotists of all yes and that is that um you, you shouldn't tell someone like you've got three months left to live or this is never going to be cured you know like this is incurable and you must take drugs for the rest of your life like actually the the, the gastro um consultant uh, who i had I remember she was this, uh, bless her, this huge, overweight, obese woman, like, who was putting things up my bum. I mean, I remember yeah. that time, was just like, that was the lowest of the low. Yeah. And, um, yeah, and I asked her, like, you know, like, what about diet? What about nutrition? Just don't so much. They don't really want to leave their house. So um, I hadn't seen such a severe condition before in my, in my life, actually. So I was freaking out. And you know, I didn't know if anything, especially not diet. You know, I, didn't, I tried the diet stuff, and, mm -hmm. and it seemed to be making worse. I followed all of the prescription like diet that you would think would work, like, you know, like going vegan and having raw foods and all this stuff, which was a rave at that point. Nothing with that was like the worst. That was making worse. Why is it that... All diets that I thought, acid alkaline balanced diets and all this stuff, which I thought I was supposed to work because I was doing it with other patients. Why was it not working for colitis? Mm -hmm. And that's when I realized that actually there's no one size fits all with diet. It may help with things like diabetes and, and blood pressure and things like that, but also colitis is a different kettle of fish. Like what causes that may be the plants themselves. The consumption, mm. overconsumption of things that your body just can't digest, and under stress, your 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 um, you get even weaker in those areas. Totally. According to your energy type, according to Ayurveda, you have three different energy types: one predominant one, or a mixture of two or three. And means is that um, everyone's different, everyone's unique. Mm -hmm. And like I'm a more vata pitta energy, and I become more vata. And you get a lot of gas and excess energy, and it's caused by stress, extra yeah. stress in your life. And even when I get emotional stress these days, I feel it in my butt. I feel it down there. And basically, um, the worst things you want to eat then is raw foods. Yeah. Okay, like raw, because that makes you more vata. So if you're very vata already, if you eat foods that's very vata, which is uncooked, raw um, foods, then mm -hmm. it will make it, it will exacerbate it. And my symptoms got worse. Mm -hmm. I had more gas, which just was going through me. I couldn't hold anything in. 
And actually, Vata are the only energy type that um, they recommend in Ayurveda, that in some cases, um, like meat will really help. So what I started to do was I started to look at, okay, like who has already cured themselves of this disease? Mm. And I started to model them. That was another thing I got from Tony Robbins was modeling success. Yeah. So I was like, okay, this Ayurvedic plan says that I shouldn't eat these foods. I shouldn't eat these very fiery foods as well. Um, I, the spices and you know, things like that. I should um, find more of a kapha, uh, pitta, fire, earth balance and <clears throat> to help ground me. Mm. So the food wasn't just keep falling out. And actually, when I did all the research, it made sense because a lot of the people who cured themselves of colitis um, use things like bone broth and beef. It started to eat a lot more beef. And in Hinduism, that's like a big no-no, man. Like, oh, do really? not eat a cow. You know, do not, cows are holy. Yeah. And I had stopped eating beef and all that stuff for a long time. However, at this point, I was like, I was like, wait a minute, I need to change my, my paradigm a bit here because these people who are eating bone broth and having no vegetables and doing this like, almost like a carnivore paleo yeah. diet are getting better from colitis. And all these people who, I didn't really find anyone who's a vegan mm -hmm. eating lots of breads and carbs getting better from colitis. It was making them worse. So, um, so anyway, so I gave it a go and I was like, all right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to eat beef. I'm gonna have to try some bone. And I did all these things, and then it also led me to colostrum. Yep. Colostrum is this amazing, um, it's the first milk that cow produces, and it, um, um, it's really healing for the gut. Like, it's amazing stuff. Totally. And I recommend it to everyone who has any kind of gut issues. And um, so these are all like weird paradigm shifts. First milk from a cow, what? Um, yeah. Bone broth, you know, all, all these things like, that actually were all right in Ayurveda, like, because it ticked the boxes. But Hinduism, the religion, yeah. the dogma of that was I know. So I was, I'm not a very religious person, but um, I start to see that there's so much dogma yes. and untruths hidden in religion. And that the science, if you take it away, like take Ayurveda and re remove all of the religion from it, you take pranayama and yoga and remove all of the religious connotations from it, you actually end up with a, a, a very powerful science of healing and transformation yeah. and nowadays we have a lot of dogma we have the vegan dogma you know there's a lot of people who tout that the vegan diet will cure everything and you should all be vegan it's bullshit man i've yeah. seen time and time again that that's not true um i know and then there's also the extreme the carnivore people who are like you should be a carnivore yeah. and again that's not also not the right way like and that's why i love the ayurvedic approach which is actually find out who you are and prescribe yourself a diet based on who you are, your energy, and everyone's individual and everyone's different. That's the biggest like, piece of advice I can give is know yourself, find out who you are, and Ayurveda gives a great system for doing that. And then the prescription comes down to the lifestyle things because you become your environment. Your mind is your environment. Ment, the word is there, the ment actually means mind. Mm. Okay? And actually the surroundings that you keep um, it is a reflection of your mind. So if you're a really messy, messy person, which I've been in the times, it means your mind's a bit chaotic. So just creating a bit of sense of order has an effect on ordering your mind too. Um, same thing, if you're surrounded by arseholes, you're going to become yeah. an arsehole eventually, yeah. right? And however much you try and be the, oh no, I'm the angel. No, you're going to be an, an angel, uh, an arsehole who thinks he's an angel. So, you know, like really like who you're surrounded by really is who you become eventually. So you're going to become really careful of your company. I call it your super mind. It's the last five text messages you received um, that day, you know, and, and that, those people are the ones shaping you all the time. Totally. They're the ones influencing you. You know, if they're sending you this link, check out this interview or um, saying this about that person or, you know, they're all giving you judgments and opinions and all these things. And those people are the ones who shape you. So you've got to be super careful of the information you're reading, who you're, what podcasts you're listening to. You, know, you should definitely listen to this one. Yeah. Um, you know, and the company you keep, who, who do you speak to on the phone, who's your mentors. Um, all of this stuff shapes who you are, and that's your mind. That's your real mind. 
So, you know, and your mind and your body are one. According to the ancient traditions, Soma, which is the, the, the way of life that I've, I now practice and preach, which comes from these very ancient shamanic, uh, pre-Hindu, pre-Vedic uh, tribes, um, this Himalayan style of Tantra and yoga that's been preserved. Um, it's all about understanding your mind, what your mind is, and feeding your mind the right things. And the mind and body are one, that we are not, we should not be disconnected from the mind. Yes. Okay. You know, back in history, Descartes actually, um, or Descartes, how do you pronounce it? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Basically, separate the mind and body. The biggest mistake that ever happened to humanity was the separation of my body and treating the mind and body as, as compa different compartments. Mm -hmm. And nowadays, you look at modern medicine as treating everything as a compartment. Oh, you treat your heart on its own as though it's just. Yeah. Single entity. <laughs> treat the brain on its own as though the brain is the mind and, and you know like psychiatrists do this all the time they like give you drugs for your brain and your head not realizing that actually everything every single yeah. cell in your body and your environment is your mind so by changing the brain and the head you don't actually fix anything and you make people worse you numb them down you take away other aspects of their, their spirit and soul so you know this deep, this compartmentalization and not looking at things holistically, biggest um, crime against humanity, but the best way to make a shit ton of money, and that's totally. what the drug companies have been doing. You know, yeah, so yeah. I'm mean, trying to break. Seeing from your side, being a pharmacist, but also now understanding the nocebo and the placebo effect, and how I mean the the principle of medicine is supposed to be first do no harm, and the first thing they do they do is like here, take this drug. And you're like, oh my God, it doesn't yeah. work on a single uh, vacuum. Because yeah. it, it's almost like the mindset becomes, okay, specialization equals vacuum equals no other f effects. And um, I actually used colostrum for a while when I went to the doctor, went to, I had the skin thing and I thought maybe I could get rid of it. And I did, I would just do so many like crazy things. I took uh, like um, a bed bug thing you give to horses because I was like maybe this will do it and then it made me break yeah. out in acne and then he gave me wow. doxycycline like a really high dose of doxycycline and oh, I just wow. destroyed my stomach. Yeah. Yeah, yeah destroyed my stomach I couldn't eat anything couldn't figure anything out colostrum was one of the only things that actually helped fix, uh, mitigate all that I was like on a day when I didn't have the colostrum while I was like healing mm. and repairing the effect was immediate and I was like, holy shit, this is like the holy grail to like help yeah. get over all mm -hmm. the gut stuff. Nice. But this doctor literally gave me the doxycycline just to get rid of acne. And I didn't know that. I thought mm -hmm. maybe he could help with all my skin stuff because he was a dermatologist and he knew everything that was going on. Nope. He's like, here, take a grenade, put it in your yeah. body. Let's see what happens. Destroys my skin, destroys everything. Mm -hmm. So being wow. on that other side, I'm sure that you could see in the pharmacist when people were basically beat down already by what they were told and then they go and get all of these drugs and the immediate effect it has to their whole body and psyche together because yeah that disconnection is something so it's it's very much put out as propaganda now where it's like your mind doesn't influence your body don't even why are you thinking that come on yeah i know, I know. Drug. so yes with that effect, could you almost see it like it was like immediate, like if you get punched, you move back? Was it something that is like that strong to that effect that you could see someone walk into the pharmacy and be like, oh, this person's gonna, they're gonna have a lot of problems just based on what they've been told? Um, yeah, well, you can just tell when um, someone's been misinformed because yep. uh, they're actually, they're, they're not actually like even aware quite half the time of the lifestyle effects on their, on their health. So I used to have to paint analogies. So you're, in, a, in a pharmacy, you've got five to 10 minutes to talk to a patient, mm. they're so busy. <clears throat> and actually they create, this was the funny thing, in the pharmacy they created this thing called the MURs, Medicine Use Review. So the idea was you could get longer time, the point of it is the government would pay you to consult the, um, the patient to take their, take their drugs more effective, like to make sure that they're taking their drugs. Yeah. Okay, this is why I got fired, because 
what I was using this time for, I was like, wow, okay, I've got more than five minutes. Okay, now I'm gonna, I'm gonna really let rip. Okay. I used to spend this time to get them off the drugs. So as soon as they walked in, I'd be like, oh, so you're on this, da, 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 da. Like, yeah. do you like take, the first question I would have, do you like taking so many pills? They're like, no, 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 of course I don't. I don't want to take them. They don't make me feel good. You know, I'm like, okay, <laughs> right. So, okay, that's great. Because that, most of the time they've got side effects. Okay? Oh. So the people don't like the side effects. And they don't want to remember to take a shitload of pills every day. And no. All that. So I'd be like, right, okay, let's imagine for a second that your body is a super efficient car like the most efficient car that exists but it's a diesel engine and for the whole what happens to your own car if you put petrol into the diesel or the diesel into petrol yeah and they're like oh yeah i've done that before and it all messes up and chugs along and breaks down and you know so i'm like well for the whole pretty much your whole life you've been putting <laughs> into your petrol engine like the wrong fuel in your body and they're like really i be like yeah, yeah yeah so tell me what you ate today and you know they they tell me what they eat and lo and behold it would be like cornflakes for breakfast you know yeah. um it will be uh some kind of ready meal for, for lunch maybe wow. mcdonald's you know and then uh dinner would be um you know maybe they'd make something at home but it would probably be, be, be out of a packet okay like frozen vegetables yeah you know like and tossed in and um, some kind of like uh, chicken um, uh, quiche or whatever, you know, like this yeah. highly processed. So they'll, they'll eat, quite often people would eat things, they think that they made their own food, but they bought that food in a packet, bunged it in the microwave. Blah, blah, blah. This was like normal. This was yeah. more normal than people eating healthy. It was insane. So, um, so I'd say like, you know, how about trying just this one thing? If, if this works, okay, and you start to feel better, mm -hmm. then, and, and quite often in between, there'll be all drinking fizzy drinks, right? Or like drinks with a lot of sugar. So I'll be like, let's try this one simple thing just for this week. If you're not going to change anything you're eating. All you're going to do is swap those fizzy drinks or that, you know, you have one guy was having 15 cups of uh, a coffee with three spoonfuls of sugar in it every day. And the doctor didn't ask him this, and the guy was on every heart med, and everything else he did was healthy. Everything else he would eat, he would actually eat a healthy diet. He'd make yeah. his own. Most of that, and he even loved his job, but he loved coffee, and he'd drink 15 cups of sugar, uh, coffee with three, three cups of sugar. He loved it. He didn't sleep very well, and uh, obviously, yeah. and um, he was on all the heart meds, and he couldn't believe it. I'm like, well, come on, like, this is your fuel. This is what you're putting in. Yeah. Okay, so I, I'll just do simple things like swap the uh, fizzy drinks or, you know, sugar, sugary drinks with something. May not taste as good, but it will be yeah. refreshing. And I'll just get them to drink, because a lot of the times, why people drink coffee and warm foods is the comfort mechanism. Yeah. So the first circuit that we, of imprinting that occurs is the, is the oral biological circuit. It's what um, Timothy Leary talks about. Yeah. It's a model of consciousness. I highly recommend you. Everyone reads it. Um, basically, the first imprinting is the mother-baby nurturing. So when you're being breastfed. Quite often, um, in the generations uh, of our parents and stuff, uh, they were actually starting to replace the breastfeeding with yeah. uh, bottle feeding and using Nestle milk, bottled milk and all that shit. Um, because suddenly it was like, not as cool to breastfeed and we should just use these yeah. you know processed foods for our children because it's more healthy apparently and you know actually Nestle made a big campaign about this um in africa especially and loads of mothers died actually as a result oh. uh, so not mothers um lots of uh, babies died as a result because the mothers started using the wrong milk anyway um so actually one of the thing one of the reasons why we smoke a lot and drink warm food is the comfort mechanism we are we are looking always for comfort um, in our mouth. It's like if we haven't been nurtured fully or well enough as a baby, or yeah. if there's a lot of fear in our household as a baby growing up, we may have sought out more comfort and comfort mechanisms. So what I would say is like, just do this, do an experiment, swap the coffee, right? Or hot, you know, sugary drinks for like 
lemon tea. Like make some fresh lemon, add a little bit of honey to it, and just have a warm lemon tea and try that. Oh, and nice. you can add ginger to it. Some people like to add ginger. And those who just did that swap, right? had incredible like results with blood pressure coming off like sugary teas and going on to just normal kind of just just that alone that one swap just just having lemon tea instead because fresh lemon is an amazing detox of cleanse oh. and um so then people went a little bit further and i told people to just make simple recipes for food and you know when they start to make their own food and eat more according to their body type boom I was having even better results. And then I was like getting most people to start um, learning to uh, do a bit of exercise. Yeah. So I'd show them like high intensity exercise. Actually, I was quite renegade because I was talking about to my patients about high intensity interval training in like yeah. 2007, 2008. So I, that was quite early on. I thought I was you know, pretty cool. advanced in my knowledge then. But yeah, like nowadays everyone's doing <laughs> high intensity interval training. But um, so yeah, so I was getting all these results and but they didn't like it. The pharmacy hated it um, because I, they said I was mismanaging the pharmacy. Even though I was getting people off the drugs and into a better, healthier state, they didn't like it, the first pharmacy. Anyway, so that's what made me yeah. shift gears. And, and I realized so much um, is down to the uh, ignorance of people because of the way we've been conditioned to become an easy push button society like everything should be easy least effort fast eat in a hurry watch tv get to work that's it yeah. Yeah. yeah it's no i mean that's a lot of the way that people think about just about everything nowadays yeah the oral fixation the first circuit is very interesting because i i know a lot of friends who are like addicted to chewing gum or always drinking stuff they always have to be doing something with your mouth it's very yeah. and it's you can really tell yeah from timothy leary's first uh his theory or um uh robert anton wilson and prometheus rising he goes through that oh uh, yes oh brilliant you've read that book yeah no. I, I love his stuff uh illuminatus yeah. series i've yes. started my my plunge down that hole and nice because people who look at these holistic mechanisms of the way that society people function often have these insights that most people just specializing in something who think they're like i'm the smartest at x never get that smart because they don't even know how to relate x to anything else yes they realize there's 23 other how many letters 23 24 i don't know yeah i'm not a letter guy bad spelling <laughs> but uh when it comes down to it it's like those are some of the most interesting things but so you were helping people Basically, go, here's your medicine. Here's real medicine. This is food. It's got nutrients in it. Let's swap yeah. those. Let's see what happens. Let's take your Coke. Let's take your coffee. Let's swap it. Let's see what happens. Yeah. Now, a whole nother area that a lot of people, uh, I think, don't really focus on, but we're literally always doing is breathing. And so I know you have a whole protocol for Soma breath for yes. basically getting into an alternate state using your mind and body together because they're one thing to then influence and help pull in health, pull in everything and let that out of you. So what does Soma breath really look like and where did that originate? How did you get into those methods behind it? Okay. This is a great question. So, okay. So if you were to look at, um, let's look at it one level up a bit, which is okay. what do people want? People want better results in their life. Okay. okay. What comes before a result? an action, all right? Let's say that this, is your, this is your outer world, is where you take actions and um, get results, okay? But where does the action come from? It comes from a decision. So before the action, there's a decision that has to be made. When decisions get made, they get made in your thinking brain, yeah. right? So that's now your inner world. What comes before a decision? Thought. Now we're getting into the esoteric. Where does thought come from? Where does thought manifest from? Depending on, as you know from Anton Wilson, like there's different, uh, yeah. you can't say one is correct. Like there is no, so is should be taken out of the language. But let's say if you were to look at it from a biological perspective, um, 
thoughts arise from your physiology. Mm-hmm. Okay, where your before that is an emotion, a feeling. All right, so feelings and then physiology. Where do feelings come from? Emotions. Look at emotions. Uh, some people would say that they come from God, from spirit. But others would yeah. say, you know, they come from a manifestation of biochemical process in the body. So let's say for a moment that they are, the, the emotions in your body, let's say actually it's an equation, energy in motion is emotion. Then, you're, then they're a manifestation of a change of physiology. So the Hindus made a map of this, okay, which is your chakra system. Yeah. That actually your hormonal system is what creates the feelings and regulates the feelings in your body. Okay. So we have all of these different, you know, endocrine glands which produce yeah. hormones. <clears throat> so like when I was in the pharmacy, I was getting all these results because I was changing people's physiology. They started to feel better. Then they'll make better decisions and then they'll go and take better actions and get better results. However, what influences the physiology more than anything is actually how you breathe. And this is something I learned then later on through my Swami, where um, when I got sick, when I yeah. when the diets wasn't working and all these things wasn't working, I was like, what is it that's affecting my emotions even more in my from the physiology? And that is the breath. Breathing is the fastest way to change your physiology, which will then change your how you feel, which will change your emotions, which will mean that you make better decisions and then actions and results. So we need to get into the layer of the oxygen carbon dioxide ratio in your body. And this is what the, the yogis had figured out. And they created the system pranayama, which is, simply means energy control pranayama, and using that, actually, we can modulate the oxygen carbon dioxide ratios in mm-hmm. the body and we can change how we feel. Now, here's basic science of this. Okay, so oxygen combines with glucose in the mitochondria to produce energy, ATP energy. Okay, ATP energy is our currency of energy in the body. So, just by knowing how to change your oxygen levels, Mm. in your cells we can actually modulate and control the energetic processes in the body right so the whole whole series of pranayama is a series of breathing techniques to influence our oxygen supply in the body okay and the more efficient you can become at using oxygen the better the healthier you are the reason why for this is because too much oxygen too much fire uh well too much air produces too much fire just like real fires, like you know, you like California wildfires, the heavy winds made these fires burn too bright and spread everywhere and cause all this damage. Same thing happens in your cells. Too much fire causes oxidative stress, uh, reactive oxygen species, all these things produce that actually can lead to cell damage, all right? Especially if it's producing excess energy that you don't need. Too little oxygen, the fire doesn't burn at all. So we need the right balance of oxygen. Again. A whole system of yoga, if you look at it from a perspective of biology rather than the metaphysics, okay, you'll see that it's the whole system around controlling the energy in the body. And by being able to control the energy in the body, totally. we can become like superhuman, supermen, yeah. superheroes. Okay. So basically, like one of the fundamental things I, I discovered was that actually. One of the things that causes a lot of stress and keeps the stress switched on is when we over breathe. Now, if somebody's in a panic state, in a state of panic or fear, as I was, this in emotional trigger, okay, actually has the same physiological effect as though you're 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 doing intense exercise. Okay? Wow. Like, yeah, so when you were like, let me give another analogy. In the olden days, right, we, we would live in the jungles, right? Mm-hmm. And we would have threats from like in the environment from lions, tigers, bears, and other tribes people, right? Who are out to get us. Now we have an amazing system called the sympathetic nervous system uh, that would kick into gear, right? 
that would instinctively allow us to produce a burst of energy, adrenaline, so we can either run away or attack and defend, all right? And <clears throat> this was really good back then, served us very well, all right? And we wouldn't have evolved to who we are today if we didn't have this inbuilt mechanism. However, nowadays, we're not in the jungles anymore. We are in the concrete jungles. And we're surrounded, instead of lions and bears, by deadlines, bills, bosses, relationships that aren't working, things like that. And that means, well, actually, we don't have the ability now to just to go and defend ourselves. You know, we can't go and attack. We're not going to to suddenly stab our boss, even though we might feel like it deep down. Um, you know, so basically we're all wallowing in a sea of stress hormones and we produce our sympathetic nervous system is on fire. Yeah. Right. And especially if you're drinking lots of caffeinated food drinks and if you're not doing the right exercise to burn off that excess energy, um, then you are going to create more internal fire and stress. Mm -hmm. Because what's happening is you're over-breathing as well. Because your demand for oxygen goes up unconsciously, yeah. even though you don't need all that oxygen. So you start to produce more fire in the cells. This starts to play havoc in the energetic processes of the cells. Mm -hmm. And we end up basically um, like having all the symptoms of being stressed yeah. out. And if this carries on too long, it can lead to autoimmune conditions. And it also like... Uh, there's a guy called Bruce, Dr. Bruce Lipton who did this great study. If you take a cell and you put it into an environment where there's stress in the environment, the cell basically shuts down and starts to go into defense mode and doesn't thrive anymore. It doesn't um, you know, produce the, the things that you would need to survive and to replicate, to thrive. So if you take the same cell and you put it into an environment that's safe and nourishing and nurturing, the cell thrives. Mm -hmm. So there's a fantastic experiment and shows that our environment and our perception of the environment is everything. So, you know, using the breath combined with intention that allows us to change the perception of our environment from instead of being in fear into more acceptance, into love, mm -hmm. into self-love, into um, hope and passion and flow. These, these, these uh, perceptions of our environment, instead of thinking that, oh, the world's going to end and, and um, everyone is, good, is, is an arsehole and we're all going to die, instead of thinking that, if you change your perception to actually the universe is conspiring to help me every single day, even the things that may seem bad at the time is still there to send me in the right direction because the universe loves me. When you change that perception, and you do it with conviction and intention. You literally reprogram the, the cell membrane, the brain of your cell, to actually being on your side. And it will actually thrive in the environment rather than hide. And this is what um, I'm. This is what Soma is all about. So my system of healing transformation is called Soma. Soma in Greek means body, one body, one mind, one consciousness. And Soma, according to the legend um, of the Rig Veda, the world's most ancient manuscript, um, where, you know, this talks about a time way, 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 thousands of years ago, maybe millions, nobody really knows what the time period they were talking about is. But imagine there was a Garden of Eden, there was all these rishis living in harmony with, with nature, and they had everything, they had it all, they were in peace. So what do you do? When that happens, um, when you're in that, that environment, you're going to take loads of psychedelics. So they were all reveling in this ritual called psych Soma, psychedelics. Mm. And um, they would use this to reach ecstatic states to have direct communication with, with the heavens, with God, and to make all the divine downloads that, that led to the, yeah. the amazing art and um, spiritual traditions of the ancient times that led to our first civilizations. Now, what happened was as humans start to explore the land, the soma starts to run out mm. uh, because it doesn't grow everywhere and all the wishes freak out because the soma's run out. So they, all the, the God Indra, the, 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 the leader at the time, orders them all to go inward to find how to create the soma within because he's the most hooked of all. So they go inward and they discover that we actually have every single 
chemical that exists in nature, we can produce it ourselves. We have an inner pharmacy and that the breath is the way to unlock its power because the, the, all the medicines that we need are produced through the hormonal system and the endocrine system of the um, autonomic nervous system. Yeah. Now, we have been told in the last, like, you know, our known history that, that we have no control over autonomic nervous system, that this is an autonomic nervous system that runs on autopilot. The only way to influence it is through drugs, through surgery, through invasive techniques. This is completely not true. And, you know, science is starting to um, come around to this. Um, actually, in the 70s, a guy called Swami Rama um, from India went to India. America and went under scientific investigation mm. and he did things that stop his heart rate for 12 seconds, you know, change his yeah. core body temperature, one hand up by a few degrees, the other hand down by a few degrees, all kinds of miraculous stuff, which baffled the scientists. Okay. And then, um, since then other people have done similar things. You know, Wim Hof is a friend of mine. He's yeah. done these things. I healed myself from a chronic illness. The only way that's possible, uh, in the state that I was in, um, is because I actually must have done something, you know, internally, yeah, yeah. something changed. So it's because I tapped into my inner pharmacy using my own will. And this is what I've taught many other people to do since. And, and it's actually nothing new, it's out there. So many people. Yeah. Hello. Okay. Boom. Okay. We're back. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we're back. Yeah, we just don't hear about those good positive stories in the mainstream. So I'm trying to change all that. Yeah. You know, and we've I feel I've created a very powerful system of transformation, not just for people who are sick, but for people who are looking for um, you know, an elevated state of life. Yeah. You again haha <laughs> keep flickering it says gremlins man it's gremlins <laughs> yeah <laughs> you're, i mean you're disturbing the forest through the knowledge of uh yeah of the breath no i mean i think so one of the things that i mean i've noticed particularly is i read a while back the oxygen advantage i had patrick on the yeah. podcast and he was talking brilliant. about brilliant stuff awesome and that but that was a point in time which i realized wow, I overbreathe a lot. And then I started to just listen, I would, like wherever I was, and I could hear everyone sighing all the time. It's almost like a greeting. Like a lot of times people like walk in, they're like, hey. And they like yes. do this thing always to be like, I was doing effort, I put effort out, I swear to God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of like you need the other person to know that you were putting effort out in some way. Um, and yeah, so when we start to realize that these one i would say identify in yourself when you're doing it and start to listen because you're going to like see how often breath is out of balance um just like everything there should be a flow i mean that's why like all most meditation techniques they're teaching like notice the flow in between breaths follow your breath whatever it is it's because there's a balance between in out in out and in the yogic uh tradition it's you know you're getting you're taking in more prana it's going through both poles the top and the bottom negative positive and that is having this interplay on your body of course like if you're out of breath you'll know if you have too much breath normally you don't realize but that is also not a good thing just like drinking too much water you don't want to be over hydrated or under hydrated and i think the approach with soma breathing is awesome because it's not only allowing you to one equate your breath to what's going on in your life but it's pulling you a bit higher so you can actually see what is how you can start to change and become the person that you want to be totally totally yeah yeah it's, so so yeah so it's basically um bringing us back into uh awareness of the the effects of oxygen in the body like, because we've we've not been told much about that. 
we've been told we've kind of been like told that oxygen is a superhero that will save the day yeah. and and, uh, and if that was the truth then doctors who have pure oxygen cylinder tanks should be healing patients left right and center yep. there's machines where you just lie in pure oxygen for an hour or whatever should be healing everyone Mir like miracles but it's not true it doesn't work because actually the most important thing is getting the right ratio of oxygen carbon dioxide okay and so actually the things that i really um recommend is is to understand the the influence of breathing on your heart yeah and the and vice versa so mike the cornerstone of soma is rhythmic breathing okay the reason why if you look at every single function in the body it's governed by a rhythm you have the circadian rhythm infradian rhythm ultradian rhythm Okay, these are different rhythms that, that are um, responsible for your sleeping, sleep-wake cycle, your, um, your digestive system, your um, moods, your, men you know, in women, the menstrual yeah. cycle, extremely important. So all these, and the energy, you know, the Ekreb cycle, it's a metabolic right. cycle. So the, a lot of it, most things in the body is rhythmic. There's a rhythm to it. And when you breathe, Basically, every single rhythm in the body becomes subservient to the rhythm of your breath. Mm. And the breath is the one thing you can consciously control. So when you breathe in a rhythm, okay, when you breathe in for four beats, out for four, let's like say you got house music with a beat, yeah. doom, 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 which I, I love, I produce, okay, you can breathe in that rhythm, like in for four, out for four in a cycle. And that cycle basically harmonizes all the other rhythms in the body. So the f foundation of Soma is this getting into coherent states. Heart math called it coherence. Yeah. And you, we create these like coherent uh, heart rhythms and it has a reflection on your mood, your energy levels, and it rubs off on people around you. It's an amazing phenomenon. So rhythmic breathing is the foundation. However, I took it a little bit further with um, changing the rhythm. So like the one thing my Swami really taught me was you should, as much as possible, consciously extend your exhales, okay? Especially when you're feeling stressed. So I was looking at the studies, actually, that was done on coherence, and they found that the ratio of 0 0.5, so breathing in out for twice the length of time as breathing in, okay? And you can do, like, say, in for two, out for four, or in for four, out for eight, okay? It actually switches you into a parasympathetic state. Mm. It still retains this coherence because you're breathing in a rhythm, but you switch on the bliss factor of being in the parasympathetic rest and digest state. So I really recommend to people after every meal that they eat, uh, before they go to sleep, or if they want to just get into these yeah. bliss states, healing states, say they've been overstressed, do this two four rhythm to music. Okay, and we actually in Soma we have all these journeys where you just listen to the audios, the special music. You breathe with the with the pattern, the breathing pattern, and it takes you to these incredible states. And I've made like a prescription for different things. So the four four rhythms gets you into higher energy states, and then you have faster rhythms, two two, where you're breathing in much faster. And the whole thing is geared up towards you helping you produce the DMT spirit molecule. Yeah. Um, because the soma within is like it's the DMT, the serotonin, it's the feel good mo uh, molecules. And if you breathe in the right way and you, you employ the, the most revered technique of all, which is Kumbhaka in um, Pranayama, is breath retention. When you hold your breath for a long enough period of time, okay, you start to reduce the oxygen in your bloodstream and you trigger a state called intermittent hypoxia. Mm -hmm. okay? Intermittent hypoxia is an incredible phenomenon. Okay? Um, and it's one of the reasons why the yogis go and live in high altitude yeah. and do a lot of this kumbhaka wow. breath retention techniques. Um, because when you hold your breath for long enough, you lower the oxygen, your body prepares to go into a state of less than normal oxygen. So what it does is it produces more red blood cells, it increases blood flow by dilating blood vessels. You produce nitric oxide. You get more blood flow to your heart, to your brain. Mm -hmm. um, different areas of your body dilate, wake up, okay? You get more optimized blood flow. And actually, dormant parts of the brain can even awaken, okay? 
So I call it uh, this technique, the Soma Awaken, because it wakes you up to a higher self, a higher power. Yeah. And when you combine this with intention, okay, what can happen is you can direct this energetic process to areas in your body that you want to heal, send energy to, or if you want to create neurogenesis, this rhythmic breathing followed by Kumbhaka actually stimulates like an effect like mushrooms and you actually enhance because of the serotonin buildup, um, you enhance the neurogenesis um, uh, properties of the brain. So you can actually stimulate growth of the wow. brain in areas that you want it. And this is what probably explains a lot of the crazy results we get with people um, being as a manifest things, cool things into yeah. their life that they want. Because suddenly they get the motivation, drive and energy to go after those things. Um, and then if you hold, if, so we have a structured system over 21 days. And the last week, you'll be holding your breath for like two or three minutes at a time. And when you get into that sort of state, you lower the oxygen enough, mm -hmm. you actually can wake up the DMT. DMT is, was shown recently in Harvard studies that it actually acts as a protection mechanism to cells that are losing, that are in uh, oxygen deprived. So when cells start to uh, have less oxygen, DMT comes in, all right? Wow. Um, as a protection mechanism, yeah. So with Kumbhaka, you can hold your breath for such a long time that you lower the oxygen to such a level that it's almost like invoking like a state where your brain thinks you're going to die. Yeah. Okay. And it produces this, this tryptamines in, in abundance. And it, you know, so yogis actually have trained themselves to be so efficient using oxygen without any harmful effects of having less oxygen that they can stay in this state for long periods of time, okay? So they're in this state of samadhi, okay? Now, there was this really cool video on YouTube I saw where they did, um, they put the experiments, they put this guy in a chamber where he was breathing um, uh, hypoxic air, mm -hmm. right? So very low oxygen air. And basically, all your, all your lungs need to feel is that there's some airflow for them to not feel like you're suffocating. So you can actually be in a room with very low oxygen and be breathing and you'll never realize it. Mm. However, what happens is the oxygen starts to drop in your bloodstream. Okay. They did this with this, this guy's experiment and they showed he suddenly went into this nirvana state and he was like in this euphoric bliss state to the point where he didn't want to even take off the mask yeah. and breathe normally because he was just in this bliss state. That's the state of samadhi that the yogis have been talking about because you slowly go into this, this DMT bliss state. I don't know if you've ever done DMT or it's mushrooms. Like yeah, mushroom, yes. Yeah, yeah, you get into this like samadhi state, right? And that's what happens when you lower the oxygen enough. So you can get into these states without having to smoke the changa or take yeah. the lick the toad or whatever it is that people like to do. You can get into this state just by becoming efficient using oxygen and you can extend that and that's what we do in soma is we show people how to extend that bliss state totally. a state of low oxygen hypoxia and do it for, in a safe way so it's not going to cause any harm and we have some amazing results with depression yeah. with um you know getting people into their flow and having these big aha moments all the things that are described from doing mushrooms or yeah ayahuasca or something we're getting those effects through our, our programs without anyone taking anything. Wow. So it's amazing, apart from air. Yeah. It's I mean, that, that exactly. Yeah. And that's, you know, I've, I've chased that a little bit with uh, Dr. Joe Dispenza's work on, uh, uh, he is a uh, breathing technique in his meditations. It's more of like pushing cerebral spinal fluid up. Um, yeah. But a lot of this seems probably very counter to what people have heard or do believe so I want to ask, is there anything right now that you're currently questioning? And so that can be like the way doorknobs work, politics, the environment, whatever it is. But is there something that you're currently questioning? You're like everyone in mass consensus is like, yeah, I think it works that way. And you're like, mm, I just don't think it does. Um, well, I've, as a renegade pharmacist, that's like my name. I pretty much have built a reputation of questioning pretty much everything <laughs> yes um because you have to you have to otherwise you become gullible and, and dumb and broke and stupid as i was because if you accept everything the government tells you you're, you're screwed um you know so if, if we're talking in terms of the scientific 
world, like, um, you know, the, in terms of biology, health. Um, so I've broken a few paradigms. You know, one of them is this idea that um, oxygen is your friend. No, it's a, it can be a dangerous enemy too. So you have to make it your friend and you have to bring it into, um, into balance, into totally. control. Otherwise it goes out of control, too much fire. So, um, you know, the other paradigm I, I shifted a long time ago was this idea of sugar um, causing, uh, sorry, fat causing, saturated fat causing yeah. heart disease, which is another huge myth. So I, you know, I really busted that one with a presentation I did. It was quite controversial. Um, it's quite a popular video on YouTube many years ago, actually. And, um, you know, we, we know that actually that it's probably the sugar not the fat that we need to worry about. Well, it's definitely the sugar. And um, the saturated fat is actually quite good for you. Now, the thing that I'm questioning again now is, um, but it's something I already know, is this whole idea of uh, the carnivore diet. Mm. Okay? Um, and there's a lot of debate right now. So the people who really preach about the carnivore diet, um, you know, so they understand the saturated fat sugar thing they understand all yeah. that stuff and the people who follow the carnivore diet they should all be dying of heart disease right um <laughs> they may have higher cholesterol but it doesn't mean that they're getting any heart disease yeah. you know so the, the doctors will look at that people who are doing the carnivore diet and they may have elef slightly elevated blood cholesterol and they'll look at them as oh they're a risk factor now okay of getting heart disease now here's check this out there was a study it's called the mr fit study right uh, multi, um, ah, what's it called? It's the basically the um, mul multiple risk factor mm. um, intervention trial. Okay, and the idea was to see whether uh, there is such a thing as a risk factor. Mm. Okay? So we're we're told that high cholesterol is a risk factor. We're told that. Um, you know, smoking and alcohol and all these things are risk factors. And, you know, that your genetics are risk factors and all this. Totally. Well, they realize that actually there's no such thing as a risk factor. In 25, this is a very long study. They realize that there is no risk factor at all. Like, you take away all the risk factors, you're still at risk. Yeah. Okay? And that was a huge paradigm shift because I actually, I was really like... Um, you know, convinced that, you know, if you, uh, for a while when I was younger, like, you know, as a pharmacist, like that high, high cholesterol leads to heart disease. When I actually, when I started to dig deep, realize that actually there's a lot of people with high cholesterol yeah. who never get heart disease. Okay. There's a lot of people with high blood pressure. I didn't, I never knew this till recently that Gandhi, right? His blood pressure was 200 over 100 for most of his life yeah. and what did he die of he died of a bullet in the head in his 80s yep okay so you know like that was a really big paradigm shift for me it was this fact that there is no such thing as a risk factor so we really, really whether we are whether we um live or die is really really down to a certain degree down to the hands of destiny right yeah. and there is right now huge quests okay for immortality yeah so there's all these like i'm not gonna say any names uh of people who are like i'm gonna live to i'm 180 and then the entire podcast is devoted to that yeah and they do all kinds of weird shit and a lot of the things they do is out of the reach of joe Pog public okay. and what's happened right now is that there's a huge um fear of death in general like you know like more than there ever was. There's a lot of neurotic, paranoid, uh, older <laughs> generation people who just simply don't want to die. And it's just coming to terms with death, okay? And whether we really are ever going to be truly immortal, that is really... I was listening to this podcast interview with um, this guy talking all about um, telomeres. And the fact that it doesn't matter, right? You, you could have um, the healthiest diet in the world, but your telomeres, unless you, uh, they don't stop sh um, shortening, mm -hmm. you're going to die. Yeah. Right? And actually, that you can't even, they, they still don't know yet. 
how you lengthen the telomeres. They still have, they can't definitely say what increases the length of the telomeres or how, if it's even possible. But basically, you have to basically, um, you have to, um, like somehow create telomerase yeah. inside the cells and they still don't know how that's possible. There's, there's just no mechanism that, that you can't even inject it in, you know, and make that happen. It's just totally. impossible. So we have a kind of hard wire to die one day. Yeah, and definitely. it's like, I'm wondering, are, are we ever going to truly be um, immortal? Or maybe these yogis who are the famed Himalayan yogis of all time, Okay, maybe they did find a way to do it through this Kumbhaka training, become a super efficient use of oxygen. Yeah. So you don't have as much oxidative stress. Because actually, um, oxidative stress still doesn't change. Um, if you take out the oxidative stress, still doesn't um, influence the telomere mm. thing. So, um, so, say even if you do all this Kumbhaka stuff, yoga stuff, and it doesn't influence telomeres. You know, what is it these immortal yogis are doing that's different if they even exist? Maybe what they're doing is, it could be one or two things. One could be that they have an intention, they have a clear intention, and that intention is changing the DNA mm. and releasing telomer telomerase inside the cell. Or maybe it's to do, all to do with intention, and, and that's the magic. Or maybe the reason they're immortal is because we're talking about them. Yeah. Right? Is yeah. it, and that is the name is immortal. And that what we really should do as human beings is in this time, rather than wondering how long we're going to maintain this horrible existence that we pray for ourselves, is more thinking, how can I lead an incredible life, be a great human being, and create something so amazing that people talk about it after I'm dead? That's the true, in my opinion, the true definition of immortality. You take away all of the art and music on the planet, what he left, what did humans really do for the planet? Right? Yeah. Really. Like, so if we get, if we become more creative, if we try and create things that are so great for the planet that people will talk about it when we're dead, that to me is the real quest of human beings rather than trying to live forever. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Wow. Okay. I have to end on that because that's, I really like that. So, before we sign off, though, where can people find you? Um, so I highly recommend you go to somabreath.com and you um, sign up for the, the free webinar and you, you listen to all the advice on there, start implementing the techniques, you'll start getting instant results. I show you like a really cool um, breathwork meditation that will take you into these altered high end states of consciousness all for free. And then you can learn about our deeper programs, like the 21 day protocol, um, or, um, the retreats that we do. And you can also become an instructor and our instructors are actually really getting successful now, earning a living full-time living being awesome. breathwork coaches, just doing breathwork, um, which is awesome. And then now we're rolling out other trainings like the yoga and, um, the Ayurveda diet nutrition stuff. So that's, that's Soma. Highly recommend it. And then the other um, website, check out the renegadepharmacist.com. That's my like place where I house all my information, all my content about science and um, health and spirituality. And also, I highly recommend if you have any kind of leaky gut issues, if you've got colitis, mm -hmm. ulcerative colitis, any ulcerative condition, check out the health protocol. You can even contact us. We're doing free consultations oh, cool. um, for people. Support at the renegadepharmacist.com and, um, and try out our colostrum. You said the colostrum was great for you. Yeah. Oh, try yeah. out our colostrum. It works like magic for a lot of people. Um, give it a go. You know, I'm not going to say it's going to cure anything, but it will certainly um, help. It's not going to do any harm. And definitely give it a go. And, and that's it, really. That's, oh. that's our main key offerings right now. Awesome. Yeah. And I'll have those linked in the show notes too. Well, Niraj, thank you so much for coming on. That was awesome. And I have a feeling a lot of people are going to be diving down the rabbit holes of breath and uh, understanding intention, creating uh, what's around them and not fighting, fighting tooth and nail for immortality. So thank you so much.
Awesome.